I'm going to be cooking for you uh, a wild mushroom tarragon uh, fricasse. It's going to have um, some walnuts, some broad mm. beans, a little bit of tomato, some sort of traditional uh, flavors of shallot, uh, banana shallot, and some garlic and courgettes. Sound all right? That sounds great. Good. <laughs> We're just going to put this in a little bit of butter and some extra virgin olive oil. Um, very low sort of uh, heat cooking, so we're not burning the extra virgin olive oil, which we know has got good brain health mm -hmm. uh, um, benefits. Um, and the, the sort of overriding flavor is going to be the wild mushroom, mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be kind of mellowed with the, um, the tarragon, hopefully. So, yeah. You're in London for 10 days. How's your, how's your um, journey been so far? It's been fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about that on the way in. Yeah. People keep asking me, are you breaking the jet lag? Uh, and my answer is, we're not breaking jet lag at all. We're yeah, going, yeah. <laughs> we're going hard day and night. So yeah. I'm here with my son. Yeah. You met him. He's Kai, 14. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite a maturation experience for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the journey and the places we're going to are not accessible to just people who are here for tourism. So yeah. I feel honored. And it's been fantastic. So we did some... Uh, Additional stuff, we went to Stonehenge, as I told you. We did yeah. a bike ride for a couple hours. We went to Tate Britain to see Van Gogh. Yeah. And uh, and all the stuff related to the book as well, and a different restaurant every night. We went to a, I think it was a tandoor kebab. It was like a tapas tandoor thing. And then one night we went to an Italian restaurant. Last night we went to Banconi. Uh -huh. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but I traveled with each of my boys once a year to a far off place alone. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. The communication is different when it's just me and one boy. Yeah. You get all of them together. It's wild. It's great, too. Yeah, yeah. I like to see the city, so we get a pulse of the energy and just that I can see how they're navigating a busy space. Yeah, yeah. And then I like to see the land right outside of the city because sometimes cities start to blur, you know. They've got similar restaurants and similar subways. Absolutely, and, yeah. So I like to get out a few hours to, what do the trees look like? What does yeah. the land look like? Yeah. What do the people look like outside of the city? So that's where we're, so tomorrow's Edinburgh. I've done the same actually with LA. So uh, I've got a few of my friends that live there and we, we go over hikes just outside the city. Mm -hmm. And it just gives you a real sense of, mm -hmm. of how real people live in, in that part of the world, yeah. right? Because otherwise you just see, like you said, the sort of same museum and, and tube network and, and uh, restaurant scene. Mm, um, heavy on the garlic and onions. Yeah, I'm all, yeah. I'm so, all for that. <laughs> yeah, so I've just uh, chopped up the that. shallot and um, the garlic and it's going in. So we're getting that the proper French sort of style flavors here. And uh, I'm not uh, scared of using like a little bit of butter, uh -huh. um, even though, yes, it has saturated fats and stuff, but, you know, in moderation, these quantities. Yeah, it's right. not the indulgences, it's the habits. That's an interesting thing. You know, these, in L.A., people go on a diet and they say, if you know if they've stayed on the diet for 24 days and then they have a burger they think it undoes it the does. value of those 24 days it doesn't yeah the indulgence yeah. is never hurt the body yeah um it's the habits that get us absolutely and yeah. so how would how would you describe you growing up and eating food like what was your connection with it was it something that was important or was it something that you've only recently got into i don't remember food being remarkable when mm -hmm. i was young mm -hmm. i don't remember music being remarkable when I was young, even though those are things I love now. I think as a teenager in Los Angeles in the 1980s and 90s, it was such a toxic environment yeah. that I almost feel like it was living under just this constant threat. Mm -hmm. So the things I enjoy now, either I wasn't exposed to them or I didn't cultivate them. So I don't remember much of food. I do remember the first time thinking about food was in the university right. when they had the cafeterias. Yeah, yeah. And so then they had all kinds of different food. I think like meatloaf and yeah. pasta. And that was the first time I noticed there were different cheeses. Yeah. And, and um, I met my wife, my, my wife now. Uh, back then, I, when I met her, she was the first person to take me to sushi. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and now I'm, I'm just I'm not a sushi snob, but yeah. I am a sushi connoisseur. I, yeah. I, I'll eat California roll. It's like French fries. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. like it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it any time. But yeah. I've also indulged and gone to, you know, Masa in uh, uh, in New York City, which uh -huh. is a Michelin three. I don't, I don't get into the ratings. And if there is something, I like San Pellegrino's yeah. uh, yeah, ratings yeah. more and more young and creative. Yeah, yeah. Their top 50, whatever uh -huh. it is. But I went with my teenage son and it was pricey. We indulged. We, we, we cut the money for the hotel budget. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. raised the and money. Raise it for everything else. And it was yeah. seven hundred dollars each. Really? Wow. I was it? And 
Was it seven hundred dollars worth, worth it? It was. Oh, fuck. That, that's it the was. most important thing, yeah. right? So. We made we made a couple of jokes. Yeah. He, he was sixteen then. Yeah. Uh, not my son Kai is here now. Zane went with me to New York. Uh huh. We made a couple of jokes looking at each other, and we went last meal. Yeah. Meaning like if yeah, we yeah, were, yeah. it's kind of a macabre thing to bring yeah, up. Yeah, totally, yeah, totally. Last meal. And we ex- we've extended that to uh, what would be your last bite? Uh-huh. You know, the last uh-huh. flavor yeah. Yeah. you want to enjoy in, in some sort of strange hypothetical situation. Yeah, yeah. For me, I don't know what it is for you, but for me it would be uni. Uni? Uni. What, remind me what uni is? It's sea urchin. Oh, wow. Sea okay. urchin. With seaweed paper, just to soften it with a little salt. That I don't is think my. I've even eaten that. Yeah, it's wow. It's a little bit like um, it's got the smokiness of a good scotch. Uh huh. The texture of uh, pate almost. Okay. You know, it's briny. Uh huh. Enjoyable briny. Yeah. It's not fishy. You know, yeah. It's the. It's the. I think it's the not ge- what people typically would assume would be like you know raw fish or. Yeah. Know, or those, yeah. Those who- and there, but there is a hint of ocean to it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. something you desire. And so when you come to LA, and if we ever hook up, yeah, north of LA to Santa Barbara, 100 kilometers, they actually have great sea urchin in the Santa Barbara pier. Amazing. It's, you just go to the pier and get. It doesn't have to be a an exclusive yeah. access yeah. thing, but. So it's been fun bringing food in with the, with the kids. And yeah. so then jump forward, I've got teenage kids. Uh, I do want them to be as robust as they can be, uh-huh. psychologically and physically. And then so we started telling them, don't eat junk food, don't eat that, don't eat, but we didn't give them an alternative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with kids, it's like, all right, you took all the good stuff out yeah, of the closet, the yeah, 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 yeah. but there's nothing left. Yeah. I prepared my first meals for Mother's Day. Uh, uh, this year for my mom. You prepared your first meal? For like oh. company. Oh, okay, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. For, uh, it was just my, you know, my, uh, my brother and my mom and, uh-huh. and uh, it was just a gesture to her. Last year my father, her husband passed away, so mm-hmm. it was sort of like, you know, you, you, we're gonna pay a lot of attention to you, mom. Yeah, I love you. yeah, yeah, definitely. And what I found that I'm good at is, um, is baking fish. Baking fish, okay. I can bake a Killer salmon. Yeah, yeah. In, in like baking paper, is that how you do it? Or like I do it in foil and, I, oh, okay, and in the yeah. toaster oven. It's yeah. a strange thing. I yeah. feel like I can predict, I guess that's the surgical thing in me. I, I need, yeah. uh, <laughs> I can control the temperature and predict the timing better than the big oven. Right, right, yeah. Sometimes it says it's 350, but I, I don't know, it doesn't feel like it. And I don't want to put the extra thermometer in there. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I tend not to eat a lot of meat, but it's, that's a different topic we'll get into. Mm-hmm. I think it's, mm-hmm. again, being a cancer surgeon, I'm trying to... Mm-hmm. I'm trying to lean away from eating flesh. Something about it is there's some cognitive dissonance I'm going through about operating on patients and yeah. eating flesh. Something's not vibing with me as I'm yeah. getting older. But for my family, um, I put the you get the salmon, mm-hmm. you put it on a long sheet of uh, aluminum foil. Mm-hmm. It's olive oil and whatever spice you want on top. There's yeah. like a salmon seasoning powder, and just close it like a little envelope. Yeah. And it's 30 minutes at 350. All right. Okay. It's yeah. just like, it's perfect every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I, I, I tell my patients uh, about that. The sort of like um, uh, issue around fish, a lot of people don't like to touch fish or they feel like they're going to undercook it or yeah. overcook it, whatever. But it takes that sort of stress out of it because you're just using something very simple technique like that, just placing it yeah. in some foil and then putting it in, in the oven. Yeah, yeah. It's the fuss factor, I think, that can be a turn off. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to quickly go back to this recipe, yeah, yeah. So I'm just like I, I, I'm engrossed in this food <laughs> chat, which is brilliant. Uh, so I've just popped in uh, the courgettes and the broad beans. I'm adding the um, dehydrated mushrooms that are rehydrated with a little bit of hot water. These you can get from most supermarkets, these, and they're absolutely wonderful. That umami flavour is wonderful. And talking about that macabre sort of uh, discussion about what your last flavour would be. Mum would probably be um, yellowtail sashimi mm. in a truffle oil. Mm. There's a restaurant in uh, the UK called mm. Roca. I think there might be one in, in, in America as well. Um, but that is like, honestly, one of my favorite dishes. We always order it and it's something, you know. Yellowtail, that's funny. My yeah. son Kai, who's here, uh, his, his favorite is also yellowtail. Oh, really? He likes the uh, it's, it's yellowtail collars, hamachi collar. It's, uh-huh. the, it's like the ring of the... Uh, the the neck of the fish before it turns in the body right right and then they and they cook it and uh, 
It's fantastic. What is what is truffle oil? So uh, truffle is the um, the mushroom mm -hmm. that you get from the Perigord region. I'm familiar about that. And how do they get the oil from it? Similar to olives? Yes. So, well, actually, what they do is the, there's a couple of ways. You can either just extract the essence of it and then combine that with a, a neutral oil, mm. or you can actually shave bits into it and then mm. just steep it as you as you would make like like a chili oil in the same sort of way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've just uh, popped in the cooked uh, broad beans, mix it all together. The one thing I forgot to mention are uh, nigella seeds. These are absolutely fantastic, also known as black onion seeds. Um, and they impart that sort of, um, uh, the aromatic flavor that marries well with the tarragon that we're popping in here as well. We've been chatting for food yeah. <laughs> the whole time, but you're, okay. you're here promoting your incredible book, Life Lessons by a Brain Surgeon, from a Brain Surgeon. Um, how's it all going? It's, I mean, it's, it's already become a bestseller in the UK in a couple of weeks. I, 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 you know, the funny thing is I have, I'm not a, I try not to look at that. Even my own social media, my Instagram, yeah. I have somebody, I give the material to them yeah. and say over the next month, here's some cool images and some interesting thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And I like to walk away from it. Yeah. I, for me, the constant connection with, with, uh, social media rankings, cause I'm sort of a, I'm a competitive person. Uh -huh. I, 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 I'm you sensitive. Your brain surgeon, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you want me to be competitive, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, casual. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. So for me, creatively, it helps to look at things once a week. Uh -huh. Like that's Sunday. Let's see how the week went. So I haven't looked at it, but uh -huh. it has been, um, it has been a delight mm -hmm. because the publisher, Venetia and her team at uh, Penguin, yeah, they suggested the title. Oh right, okay. They, it's. It's my heart and soul over the last 15 years of collecting stories yeah. and waiting till I was uh, mature enough in the field that had mm. enough gravitas to... <laughs> otherwise, it's like, who, who is this guy telling yeah. us about our brains? Yeah, and yeah. How yeah. dare he speak about something so complex and personal? Because you said that at the start, the start of the book, you've been waiting to waiting write this, to write book, this for, book for years. In the States, yeah. we get a lot of quick experts. Okay, yeah. Self-declared experts. Mm -hmm. They get some promotion, and yeah. then you look at the track record, and it's lacking. I didn't yeah. want to fall into that. Yeah, yeah. And so, what she did, and what they did, is they put the word stories mm -hmm. in the subtitle, and mm -hmm. I really, really am indebted to them for that. Yeah. Every chapter starts with three or four pages of a standalone gripping story. Mm. And can I give you the one about food? Since please do, food? please do, yeah. Because uh, that's the one where you go to Ukraine, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a phenomenal story. And it's, and it's, uh, it's decades established. Yeah. Uh, yet it's considered new. Yeah, yeah. So that's our job, right? Yeah. Like all the, uh, we are the, how did medicine and surgery become the worst communicators in the yeah. world? Yeah, yeah, We're sitting on this giant body of knowledge. We just can't explain it to people. Mm -hmm. We haven't shared it with people. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the brain is an electrical entity. It's flesh that sparks. I like to think of it as 80 billion tiny jellyfish mm. inside an aquarium. And, um, and sometimes that electricity is aberrant, just like you can have a heart arrhythmia. And people get that. Like, mm. my heartbeat is off. Yeah. Well, your brain beat, your brain electricity can be off. And yeah. it's called uh, having a seizure. And if mm. you have more than one, it's called epilepsy. And if you can't afford medicine as kids or the medicines that they have are not working, they, uh, I was on a floor in, in Ukraine, and uh, the moms were in the bed with the kids, and they had little frying pans in the corner, and it's just yeah. cooking only fat. Yeah. And we have known for a long time an all-fat diet mm. can be used to treat epilepsy. And I said, there is the premise yeah. that I can start from to say, what, what, what can Rahul say yeah. about food? Yeah. And food can heal that was yes the print it's 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 in all the journals you might think it's wild now mm. just go on and look that up yeah all fat diet for uh for intractable epilepsy mm. and then when i was reading that i saw this quote by hippocrates and i said this is it and it was let food be thy medicine mm. and so how did we get from that to the way we eat and live now in, yeah. in, in the states and here it's just and then i would say on the flip side mm. Food can be thy poison. Exactly. Yeah. And so from there, I built this chapter that went into the mind diet and yeah, intermittent yeah. fasting. But that's you know you should ask why why can Rahul talk about food? He, yeah. He doesn't cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. so um, one thing I absolutely loved about 
each of your chapter openers is that it starts with this storytelling yeah, yeah. and you have this incredible knack for getting the reader to really live that sort of moment yeah. with you like that storytelling blended with self-help is something that's quite unique out there because I, I, I get asked to read a lot of self-help books and you know provide quotes and that kind of stuff um, and thank this, you for yours oh no 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 of course not I, I was more than happy to because it was so refreshing to actually intertwine your clinical experience with something that people who are reading this are engaging and enjoying it, but also gonna get something out of it. So how you sort of weave in and segue into stories about the mind diet and you know uh, all the different ways in which we've um, poisoned our brains, I suppose, um, I just thought it was phenomenal. So. Yeah, I, I, to, to, be, to speak candidly, the, that was my way of sort of letting Americans know uh, be wary of of experts that are not you know really experts yeah. and that maybe that's where we're getting all this misinformation but it hasn't I don't think it, they it resonated like I intended over there mm. and it has been over here which right. is just a delight yeah which is just a delight to say hey that story uh, is engrossing it also establishes why you're even writing a chapter yeah. on food yeah. as a brain surgeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. a story about being in Ukraine and all fat diet can be used to mm. treat aberrant electricity of the brain. Think yeah. about that. How, how powerful is that? That what you eat can change the way electricity is firing in your in your brain. Yeah, yeah. At, at a detectable well. level. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the Richter scale after an earthquake. We, you can see the wiggles and the squiggles change. Yeah, yeah. And from that premise, you know, you can go and, and think about well, well, what are the changes we need to make in our lives. Exactly, and how uh, food can actually impact a whole bunch of other systems in our body as well. Yeah. If it can do that to our brain, what can food do to our heart, our skin, our immune health? And you know, I've been following the keto diet for a little while now, not personally, but you know, the research behind it, and it's it's brilliant. It's used in certain sin scenarios, mm -hmm. and I think uh, John John Hopkins, um, mm -hmm. they've been using the keto diet when uh, medications have failed mm -hmm. for uh, pediatric epilepsy. Mm -hmm. But when it's brandished as like, okay, this is something for everyone, that's when we have issues. And that's when we're like, okay. Right, and this will be the f a quick way to get bikini body ready in exactly. Los Angeles. Yeah. And yeah. then the whole, <laughs> the magic and the science is now, it's gone. It's lost, yeah. It's exactly. lost, but just to go backward, see this is where a collaboration between us and this conversation is important because I only went into the deep dive into what it does to the brain. Yeah. In your, whatever you eat doesn't always get into your blood. Mm -hmm. So people think if you eat it, it's automatically going to get absorbed. No. Whatever gets into your blood, uh, sometimes it's kicked out by the liver. So that's yeah. the second screen, if you yeah. will. Mm -hmm. There's a third screen, uh, which is the blood-brain barrier. Mm -hmm. So if the thing that is the most shielded can be affected by food, then you can run with it's gonna affect every single organ system in your body. Mm -hmm. So I think when you just say like a food can heal, people say, oh, that's more fluffy stuff yeah, from people yeah, trying to yeah. sell cookbooks and, and, and make new kitchens. But no, there is real hardcore science and biology behind that that is actually happening in cancer centers and epilepsy treatment centers. Mm -hmm. They're treating people with brain diseases with diet changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And from there, the conversation goes to everything you're doing. So I was really happy uh, with seeing how you've taken this direction, the intersection of food and health, not just at a lose weight, you yeah, have a yeah, body yeah. level, but like health exactly. you know, and well-being. Yeah. I appreciate that, Rob. Whilst we're on the subject of food, I I'd love for you to try this. So this is yeah. the uh, wild mushroom fricassee uh, with tarragon. You can give us your honest opinion yeah. as well. Cause <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's my flaw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Tell me some of the components because I'm not familiar with them. I know sure, a few sure. items like sushi and grilling, but yeah, yeah. otherwise I'm quite <laughs> ignorant about So we uh, have got broad beans at the moment. This is a seasonal ingredient. Um, I think you guys call it fava beans. Oh, uh, yes, fava beans. Um, yeah, so it. these are just cooked um, or lightly steamed and then they're thrown in afterwards as well. So it's got a lot of fiber. It's a protein source as well. It's a very bland. It's sort of like a giant pea. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very bland sort of ingredient, so that's why you've got to use punchy flavors like tarragon, nigella seeds, and a little bit of wild mushroom to really bring it out. I've also added some walnuts in there because we know it's got a good source of short chain omega-3 uh, fatty right. acids. Um, tarragon, all these different simple herbs that have phenomenal phytochemical properties that can reduce inflammation in the body may have some brain uh, health benefits as well. Um, just generally looking after your internal ecosystem is what I'm about because the body has Good this word. innate um, 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 amazing ability to look after itself. And that sounds a bit woo-woo, 
But actually, if you put your body in the right environment. That, let me just jump in there. We use the word environment when we talk about the brain. Mm. The, the, so much so, there are words like synaptic pruning. Mm. That's like in a neuroscience yeah. Yeah. journal. Yeah. And that's, that's the right way to think of it. It's not as these like modular compartmentalized things. Mm. There is an ecosystem inside mm. us. Mm. And, and to take it into a different direction, into a disease direction, because I learned from that, mm. if you have breast cancer, there's a different environment and the cancer is growing in a certain way and looking for certain nutrients and fuel sources. When it swims to other parts of the body, like to the brain, which is my, what I, my specialty is, it, 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 it morphs and drinks different kind of juices yeah. in a new environment. Yeah. We speak of the micro environment inside the brain. And so your, your suggestion or your, that you posit that our body is an environment mm. and it can be healed and brought to a better homeostasis, mm. if you were. These are the kind of words we need to bring out to the public so it's not eat one blueberry and it's it, brain food. Yeah, exactly. Change this one thing yeah. and you will be skinny and gorgeous and healthy, you yeah. know? And that's exactly where we need better, more impeccable language. Mm. And so environment is exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, I love the mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> the walnuts for me are a little bitter, but they're so good for you. Yeah. yeah. What I do with the kids is I sprinkle a few M&M's into M&M's it. Too. Yeah, I know, totally, yeah. They're a little bit mm. more bitter because I've toasted them slightly just mm. to bring out some of these essential oils. But if you prefer like a slightly softer nut, pine nuts work brilliantly. Mm. I like it. Good, I'm glad. I like it. <laughs> no, I do, and I love the mushrooms in there. It gives it that fleshy flavor without, yeah. without flesh. Yeah, yeah, great. So if you want to listen to the rest of the podcast and the conversation between me and Dr. Rahul, um, head on to the podcast now and um, yeah, catch you there. Oh, 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 oh